And then from there, your mushrooms. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Scrapey, scrapey. Basically. It's that time of year again, and this is a video that I've been wanting to review for quite some time. Today, we're gonna to be seeing how Ramsey makes his beef wellington. If you are new, welcome to the channel. My name is James. I've been cooking for many years in England, France, and Spain. And when I was working in London, I was working for Jason Atherton, who used to be one of Ramsey's top chefs. Before then, he actually went out and started his own, um, well, chain of restaurants and became a celebrity chef himself. He's quite famous in the UK. So in any case, if you do enjoy this video today, then be sure to share, like, and subscribe, and let's get started. Beef Wellington has to be the ultimate indulgence. One of my all time favorite main courses and it would definitely be on my last supper menu. My version is a lot lighter and sexier and for Christmas, I'm gonna give it an added twist. Beef Wellington is also one of my favorite dishes. It's something that I don't always have. One, because it's quite expensive when you go out to any restaurants or anything and two, um, it can be a bit laborious to make at home. However, if you make it perfect, is delicious. Anytime that we had any um, cuttings or any scraps left over from slicing the beef wellingtons at work, I used to steal all of them and be eating away at them. First off, the fillet of beef. Now, look at it, it's beautiful. First, the most important part is to sear it. Salt, pepper, the fillet is the leanest and the most expensive cut of beef. Mm. It comes from underneath the lower backbone, a part of the animal which has very little muscle, and this is what makes it such a tender cut. Very, very hot pan, olive oil, and literally roll it around mm. the pan. Ramsey's right, this is the most expensive cut and it does come from underneath the backbone and it's not used a lot. So this is why one is quite lean and two is very tender. Now with the beef tenderloin, you have more than just the filet or the filet mignon. You also have the chateaubriand. You have the chain, which is not something you throw away. You can use that for soup, stews, stir fries. and depending on how you cut it, you can either leave the roast or the head on the meat, or you can take it off and use it for, use it as another medallion or any other steak. Sometimes we cut it, sometimes we don't. And once you get closer to the tail, the meat starts becoming a lot softer. So it doesn't hold together very well. And literally roll it around the pan. We're not cooking the beef, we're just searing it, which will really help. Mm to give another layer of flavor mm -hmm. and beef in. I have worked with a lot of Ramsey chefs and uh, they say no black pepper or black pepper. Yeah, sometimes they can contradict themselves. Normally when you're working and you have a question for the head chef and he comes by and you ask him, how do you want me to make this? And he'll say, blah, 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 make it like that. Okay, it could be five minutes later, the chef will come around again and say, no, I don't want it like that. I want it like this. It will happen all the time. Chefs always contradict themselves. It could be because they forgot, you have a lot of things going on, um, the kitchen's busy, or they just changed their mind. So a good saying is this, do as I say, not as I do. Lovely. Now use the side of the pan so the beef sears down the back when you tilt it. It's a secret to get it done quickly. It gives that really nice roasted flavor. Delicious. Once you've got the color, very carefully lift up the beef and sear it on top and sear it on the bottom. Mm. Out and onto the plate. The longer that that is in the pan, the more it's going to cook. If you have a screaming hot pan and the oil has come up to temp to where it's almost smoking or it is smoking, you will be able to sear much more quickly. English mustard. What this does now, it gives it a bit of sort of, bit of heat. Just lightly mm. brush the mustard mm -hmm. over the beef. So really important it's that good. you do this good. as the beef comes straight out of the pan. And as the beef starts to cool down, it absorbs all that heat from the mustard. Mm -hmm. Horseradish is a really nice alternative as well. Just leave that to sit and relax. Quick little story. So the day that I arrived in the UK, I went to stay with my family, my cousins, and this was after a 20 hour journey. I was extremely tired and I made a ham and cheese sandwich and they gave me a little bit of English mustard and I didn't know, I thought it was Dijon. So I was putting a lot of mustard on there. And of course, when I went to take a bite, that woke me up like really quick. 
mustard, English mustard, is extremely hot. Now, normally, at least in the US, we get English mustard that's powdered. You have to mix it with a little bit of water. Um, sometimes you can find it just like normal mustard. So if you're not used to very spicy mustard, like Ramsey is saying, you could substitute with horseradish. Uh, you could even use Dijon. It's not going to be the same, but you could. And you don't have to like soak it in mustard and just brush it on like he's doing and that'll be good enough. It's for a little bit of that spice, just a little. As the fillet rests, prepare the filling, which is called a duxelle. Put 700 grams of chestnut mushrooms into a blender, add a chopped clove of garlic, season with salt and pepper, and blitz. Now the duxelle is basically you want the consistency of a thicker paste. This is the quick way of doing it. It's a very quick way of doing it, blending everything first. But normally the duxelle is with shallots, thyme. You want to cook and reduce all the moisture out of it because if you have too much moisture in the duxelle, it'll make the puff pastry for the beef wellington quite soggy because the meat also has juices that the puff pastry is going to be absorbing. Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without chestnuts. I just crumble them in mm. to the mushrooms. The chestnut's sweet, nutty flavor works brilliantly with the earthy taste of the mushrooms. And because they contain more starch and less oil than other nuts, they have a much softer texture that is perfect for the filling. Keep in mind that if you're gonna be cooking this for Christmas or anything, uh, for guests coming over, that they don't have any allergies because the last thing you want to do is go through all this effort and then, um, well, you don't want to poison anybody at the dinner table, do you? Roasted chestnuts are a very Christmassy thing. But here, and you'll see this in Barcelona, and you'll see this in other places around Europe as well, when it gets cold out and during December, you'll start to see all these little stands around the city where they start roasting chestnuts that you can buy. Mm, that smells amazing. It smells like Christmas. Once the mixture is finely chopped, cook in a hot, dry pan. This removes the water from the mushrooms and intensifies the flavor. And then afterwards, of course, you want to put it on a flat sheet tray or a plate, but you want to lay it down flat. And you may want to put it in the fridge as well to help cool it down more and to, well, extract more moisture from the mushrooms. You can see the water coming out instantly. Such an essential stage, really critical to the success of the Wellington, that you dry those mushrooms out and get rid of all that water. Take the mushrooms up even further, some fresh thyme in there, which will make it really nice and light and fragrant. Thyme is one of my favorite ingredients to use. Not everybody likes it, but uh, we do tend to use quite a bit of it. When all the water's been fried off, remove from the pan and leave to cool. Then start assembling the Wellington. Stage one, wrapping the beef fillet. Mm. First of all, these wonderful slices of parma ham. And look, beautiful. Overlap it mm. and sit it there. The way that Ramsey has his whole little setup here is very good. It's very easy to work. And if you're going to be making this at home, it would be a good idea to imitate what he's doing. Give yourself a lot of space on the counter. Get a big cutting board, preferably flat. If it's bowed, you may want to end up buying a new one. Get a damp cloth, stick it underneath put the board on top, take the film, and I would prefer, I would say, out of the box, just like he has here, and pull it across the board, and you may want something behind the film to prevent it from rolling as well. Now, since you're going to be rolling, you're gonna be applying a lot of force. If you apply too much, or if the film breaks on you, because it happens all the time, you may want to double the film that you put on the cutting board for the first step. So the secret of overlapping the parma ham is to make sure it contains all those juices coming out of the beef. In the traditional recipe for beef wellington, a thick chive and spring onion pancake is used instead of ham. But the parma ham makes the dish much lighter and its sweet salty flavor really complements the mushroom and chestnut filling. Traditionally, you would make some pancakes to go with this but not the pancakes that we're used to in the US. So not the thick pancakes. Basically you're making crepes. They're very thin and it does, it adds a little extra to the, um, well, to the circumference of the beef wellington and it does make it a little heavier. I prefer Ramsey's style here, what he's doing. It's not 100% traditional, but sometimes it's 
Nice to have some variations with the dishes. A little touch of pepper, no salt, because the ham is naturally salty. Mm. Just a little twist of pepper. And then from there, your mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Scrapey, scrapey. Basically. Even a chef can make a mistake and scrape the you know what out of a nonstick sheep tray. In any case, it'd be better to use a spatula with this instead of a spoon. Mushrooms go on. Mm. Use the back of the spoon to spread them nice and thinly. Mm. Half an inch from the ends. Rump holes. No. Hop it. Every time there's meat, out he comes. Yeah. <laughs> Next. You want to lay the duxelle out as flat and as evenly as possible. If you're not a perfectionist, um, this dish does require a little bit of finesse and technique to get perfect. If you don't care, that's fine, but it helps with the cooking process later on. Lay the beef on top, and very carefully mm. fold that over. Now, we're mm -hmm. gonna lift that up and wrap the beef nice and carefully. So all that mushroom and parma ham is encasing the beef all the way over. Push it nice and tight. And this is where I'm saying that if it does break on you at this stage, which I have had it happen before with uh, rolling other types of dish meats for other dishes and everything, it can be a pain in the you know what. So if it does break on you, just put on a second layer on the first um, layer for this to fold over and you'll have a much easier time. Roll it nice and tight and go all the way mm. over. Now, the secret from here is to really let the clim film do the work. Just nip it at the ends and squeeze. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is just creating this wonderful sort of cylinder shape off and then just twist it nice and tightly. And the tighter it is, the more perfect mm -hmm. the shape. Then place in the fridge for 15 minutes to firm up. If the beef tenderloin or if your cut of meat is not quite, but almost the same length as the film, it's gonna be difficult twisting it. And it's going to shrink a little bit, but not as much because the juices are gonna be sealed inside. You want to make sure that your beef is smaller than the roll of film that you're gonna be using. And if you don't have a big enough roll of film, buy a big one for this because you're gonna need it. Once it's set, it's ready for the final wrap. A little bit of slim film, puff pastry. Beef, first roll the puff pastry over the beef until the two edges meet. Then trim off any excess pastry mm -hmm. and twist the ends together to ensure the beef is completely sealed in its pastry case. To set mm -hmm. that perfectly and get it really nice and firm to make it really cylinder type, slim film over. and just pull that nice and tight. Well, as soon as you get the puff pastry out, you have to work a little quickly. It's okay if your house is cold, like mine is today, it's perfectly fine. But if it's not cold, the puff pastry will come up to temp and it will be a little harder to manage to keep that shape. Puff pastry is made of multiple layers of dough and butter. Very tasty, but extremely fatty. And butter at room temperature gets soft. The big secret behind this is that it can be done the night before. And the tighter the tin film, the better the shape. The more even the shape, the more even it cooks. Put it back in the fridge for five minutes to firm up again. Then take off the tin film. Almost like the perfect Christmas cracker. Do you want to make sure that the first time that you wrap it is almost it's as perfect as possible? And then, of course, the second time as well, you want to get rid of the air pockets. But you want to make sure that the beef as well is not lumpy. So this end is not bigger than this end because if you have a smaller end here and a bigger end here, this little end is gonna cook a lot faster than the thicker end. To give the pastry a lovely rich golden brown color when it bakes, brush it with egg yolk. And then finally, you don't have to do this, but it's a chefy thing, mm -hmm. a little bit of decoration. Back of the knife, down, and then just twist and mark the pastry. When it comes out of the oven, it's got that wow factor. Some people can get very detailed and intricate with the designs. If you want, you can take another layer of puff pastry and you can make a lattice that goes over the beef wellington. So you can make some beautiful designs. Add a generous sprinkle of salt to ensure the pastry becomes lovely and crisp. 
then bake in an oven at 200 degrees for around 35 minutes, depending on how rare you like your beef. Once out of the oven, it's crucial you let the Wellington rest for at least 10 minutes. This allows the meat to relax and reabsorb its delicious juices, making sure it's tender and succulent. Nice and gently. Hear that pastry, how crisp that is. This is the bit we've been waiting for. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. That is beautiful. If you can get your beef wellington to look half as good as this, you did a good job because it is not easy the first time making it look this good. Now, a few things to point out. This is the in cut, and you can tell that it's just a wee bit too cooked for me. Just a little bit, but it's the end piece. The center should be less cooked than this. Now you can see that even Ramsey didn't make a perfect duxelle. It's a little thin on the top left side, but that's okay. If you can get it like this, it's good enough for your gas. I'm in heaven. And for me, <laughs> if you want a really nice change mm. to roast turkey, this has to be the ultimate for the table. It smells Christmassy. The chestnuts, the mushrooms, and that nice crisp pastry on the Beautiful. outside. Look at it. I'm ready to die <laughs> and go to heaven. So guys, if you are curious on making this at home, Ramsey has a very good step-by-step -step recipe. So definitely check this video out. I have a quick question for all of you who do um, celebrate the holidays with family. I don't mean if you believe in it, but at least if you just celebrate it with the family, because it is a time a year that you typically get together with people that you haven't seen for a year and you typically eat but let me know what you have for the holidays. Do you have ham? Do you have turkey? Uh, another type of roast, chicken? Uh, do you have beef wellington? I'm interested to see what you guys usually or typically eat. After watching this, I may actually make this for Christmas dinner because I was thinking about making a roast, but maybe, maybe I'm gonna be making, uh, I don't know, beef wellington. I have to think about it. Anyway, be sure to check out the rest of my videos and recipes if you want another interesting video or recipe. Click on this one here and I will see you guys again very soon. Until next time, take care. And if you do make this at home, please let me know in the comments how it turned out. Please, please, please let me know. Hopefully it turned out good. If not, let me know anyway. Until next week, take care.